Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing another Mahano train set. I'm uh, pretty happy about this because, uh, as some of you may remember, last spring I managed to pick up a Mahano TGV train set. And I was overall pretty happy with that train set, and I was kind of interested in picking up another one. Uh, but I think that set was about 170 Canadian dollars, so it wasn't exactly dirt cheap. So uh, I was gonna wait a while. And then all of a sudden, Amazon had a flash sale on the Wego train sets, and they were selling them for, I think, about 35 or 36 euros, which is about 50 Canadian dollars, which is a really good deal for a train set. So when I saw this thing going that cheap, I just instantly ordered it. Now, I did have to pay shipping and stuff on it, so it was more like 90 Canadian dollars, but that's still a good deal. That's like 75 American dollars, which is really not the kind of pricey C train sets going for these days, especially, you know, a high speed train set. So, yeah, I picked it up, and here it is. Hopefully, it's okay. Um, this is how it arrived. It looks pretty bad. It's even slightly opened, and it looks like Customs uh, opened it up for whatever reason. But yeah, hopefully the train set's okay, and uh, yeah, we can uh, check it out and see what it's about. I suspect it's going to be pretty similar to the other one, but who knows? It's a different paint scheme at least. So let's find out. Let's open this thing up. I think I'm just going to... Yeah. That hardly took anything to open. Anyway, here. Ah, yes. Check it out. We go speed train. Now, uh, this is meant for the European market, so unfortunately uh, the controller in this set, I assume just like the other one, is not going to be at all compatible here. Uh, you could probably get an adapter or something maybe, but uh, I already have a layout to run it on. But uh, we'll at least unbox this train set on the floor. I'll show you uh, everything in detail, and uh, then we'll test it out on the layout and see how it performs. The other one wasn't too bad, so I'd assume this one will be kind of similar, but... There's only one way to find out. So here's the uh, box in detail. I overall think Mahano did a pretty nice job with this. I really like the uh, close-up of the locomotive on the front, and uh, overall the artwork is just really clean. Uh, on the sides here, you've got the contents of the box in all sorts of different languages for all the different areas throughout Europe this is sold in. Uh, on the side here, you've just got the locomotive, the controller, and the track. Uh, on the back, you've got uh, a whole bunch of different expansion packs which are compatible with this train set. And uh, one thing I really like about Mahano is that they put a label which actually says that, uh, you know, their stuff is compatible with other HO scale brands. Because uh, something that not a lot of beginners uh, necessarily know is that uh, HO scale equipment, with very few exceptions, is all compatible. So you can mix different trains. Uh, controllers, track all together, and it will pretty much all work together, which is really one of the best parts of this hobby. But if you're a beginner that doesn't know this, um, this can be a helpful hint. So uh, I like that they put that on there. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to say uh, about the box other than that. And uh, of course, what really matters is what's on the inside. So why don't we uh, get to having a look at that? Here's the entire train set. It's a little bit weird that they put this all together in two separate parts, but uh, whatever. It looks like we've got everything here. So I think we'll start here. One of these two is the locomotive. I don't know which is the powered one and which is the dummy, but we'll have a look. So uh, this would appear to be the uh, locomotive since it's geared. The detail on it uh, at a first glance looks okay. It's really nothing uh, spectacular, but it is a, a budget set after all. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look bad. And you got the pentagraphs. These feel, uh, they feel kind of brittle, if I'm honest. They kind of lock into place, though, so that's nice. They're not completely loose. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, when you're working with this budget stuff, though, you do have to cut it some slack. So there's our locomotive. And I got a train car. One thing I will say about this stuff is it all feels really light. I suspect this would all perform a little bit better if you added a, a bit of weight. I did have uh, some derailing problems with the TGV. Uh, it seemed to work better in one direction more than the other. But uh, yeah, I think adding a little bit of weight to these cars could definitely improve them. And then you've got the dummy, which looks pretty much identical to the locomotive, with the exception of uh, not being uh, 
you know, driven, obviously. Now, as far as all the other equipment goes, we got a uh, wall wart with the European style plug. And uh, here we've got the controller. These uh, controllers seem decent. I've never actually been able to try one out because uh, unfortunately, again, I don't have the uh, proper plug for it. But uh, in any case, uh, it does seem like a decent controller and I'm sure it would power this set fine. And uh, here's all the track. They don't seem to connect this all together with anything. It's just uh, loose in the box. And uh, here's your uh, re-railing terminal, which connects on to the uh, end of the controller here. And then you got a whole bunch of uh, clips to put it all together. So I went ahead and I set up the track. Really quite easy to do. And uh, overall, the track doesn't look uh, too bad right out of the box. There uh, are three different reasons I don't really like this track though. The first one is that it's a steel track, so this will oxidize kind of easily in a really humid environment. It's not gonna conduct electricity as well as nickel silver. Um, but the bigger thing is that this doesn't have its own road bed. So if you're setting this up on the floor like I have here, uh, you've gotta be very careful that you don't have like bits of dust and stuff around it because those can get caught in the locomotive's gearbox. And uh, something like this, you never wanna set up on a carpet because the little carpet fibers will do the same thing as the dust. They'll get caught up in the gearbox. But uh, other than that, just for a basic starting loop of track, hey, it will get the job done. It would probably be best set up on a tabletop, however. Anyway, we're gonna get this train on the track here, and I've got my old trusty lifelike controller to uh, power it, since of course the other one is uh, European and I can't use it with this. Well, here she is all set up on the track. It all uh, looks pretty nice, I've gotta say, and uh, I also went and got the uh, lifelike controller all wired up here, as you can see. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's take this thing on a test run. Uh... Oh, okay. Well, that was a bit weird, but uh, it seems to be running now. Well, it seems to be performing uh, decently now. It's a little bit weird how it didn't start right off the bat, but it's possible something just got a bit jostled in uh, shipping. But in any case, uh, why don't we uh, take this thing over to the layout and uh, test it all out there. All right, let's take this thing for a rip around the layout. Okay. All right, well. Huh, that's really weird. Seems to keep getting uh, stuck and the engine kind of looks like it's I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's uh, shaking quite a bit. Something seems just a little bit off about it. Mm -mm. I'd like to have a quick look at this locomotive just to see. I don't know if maybe there's some flashing on the gears left inside of it that are messing it up, but uh, it just doesn't seem to be taken off as well as the other one. So I just want to have a quick look inside this thing and see if we can figure out why exactly it's uh, not starting all that well. I suspect it's gonna be a gearbox problem, but well, there's only one way to really figure it out. That's well, relatively easy to get into. Yeah, so here we got uh, the whole uh, drive system. This is really similar to a Bachman, honestly. You've got the uh, three-pole motor in the middle and the uh, die-cast frame. Uh, this is so similar to that Bachman uh, F-Unit train set that I got fairly recently. Uh, yeah, a lot of similarities there, but in any case, let's see. Yeah, I was just trying to turn this drive over manually. It really didn't feel like it. it felt like something was almost clicking. So let's see if we can open up both of these uh, gear boxes here. I don't see anything really wrong right off the bat at all. Uh, Looks to be in order as far as I can tell. Yeah, there's nothing too obvious, but who uh, who knows? So I guess we'll just put that back. This, there's not really any oil in this thing. Um, that's not so good. I guess we could put a bit of lubricant in it, but I don't think that that would be causing the problem. It's possible this whole thing just needs to break in a little bit, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's put that around there. 
here, snap it back in place. See, what I'm hoping to find is like an obvious piece of flashing or, or something of the sort, which would, you know, inhibit this from all turning correctly. Let's have a look at this now. Yeah, it all seems okay. Well, I'm hoping it's just a lack of lubricants issue. So I just went and uh, grabbed my controller here and I uh, put the leads directly into the wipers. And if I give it power, you can see it seems to uh, start fine. And even if I uh, change the direction, it's also okay. So I'm hoping that uh, just taking it apart and giving it some lubricant helped it out, but uh, I personally find that a little bit strange. The only thing I did notice which uh, could possibly be a problem is that uh, the motor is really, really close to both of these beams. So it's possible, maybe at a certain angle, the some component here is rubbing against that and that's why it gets stuck sometimes and uh, just causing the motor like flipping the direction back and forth uh, gives it just enough time to uh, get kind of unstuck. I'm not entirely sure. That's the only thing that uh, could possibly be the problem in my books, but I don't really know. And uh, here we are. I'm just drop a screw in each of the holes. All right, let's go uh, test this thing out again. Well, let's see if that made any difference. Uh huh. It really doesn't seem bad. What about reverse? It's still wobbling, but it's not stalling. Weird, I guess it just wanted oil. I gotta say, after a few minutes of running, this thing seems to be performing better and better. So uh, yeah, it's good to see. The other one needed a bit of break in too, so maybe this is just something these uh, Mahano engines require. I don't know, but I'm happy that it's doing better. Well, folks, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed uh, messing around with this little train set today. And uh, at the end of the day, I actually do think it's a pretty decent train set, especially for the money. This is, after all, one of the cheapest train sets I've ever worked on. And uh, considering it was a high-speed train, which if you exclude shipping was just 50 Canadian dollars for an entire train set, it really is quite a good value. Uh, there is a little bit to be desired, however. Um, this is actually one of the few times where I've seen a manufacturer under-lubricated locomotive. And uh, as you all saw, by just adding a bit of grease and oil, we made this thing perform significantly better. And uh, I also think that they're building the train a bit too late. Uh, Off-camera, I was having some derailing issues with the dummy locomotive. Um, I was able to fix that by adding some washers to it, but for a beginner, that could be a problem, you know, if it's coming off quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, it's not flawless. It's, it's sort of like, you know, they're just this far away from making this set a whole lot better. But for the money, it's a decent train set. You know, it's not perfect craftsmanship, but it's dirt cheap. So really kind of got cut it some slack somewhere, you know. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. 
Anyways, with that, I'd like to uh, thank you all so much for watching.